Uh, happy Sabbath church. Uh, can you all hear me well? If you can hear me, just put a thumbs up so that I know that you guys, okay. Uh, the pastor Melky, which is my dad, I've approved that. Anyway, uh, it is my greatest privilege, as I always say, to come to uh, our Chems, I can't say Chemsford, Chemsford, Braintree, Malden, and uh, Basildon Church. It is uh, amazing that uh, we all get together in this Zoom channel, where we can, Zoom meeting, where we can worship together. Uh, me and my friends, we were talking about this. You know, it is wonderful to know uh, that the devil tried to shut the church buildings, but he couldn't shut the worship. And we praise God that we actually still worshiping every day. And the church building may have shut, but the praise and worship in the houses can never be shut. And I praise God that our churches have uh, become very busiest uh, networking organization like never before, that we always to have something that we going on each day, a hundred days of prayer or the Bible studies, youth Bible studies, youth uh, counseling. And there's a lot of youth counseling is going on because of young people getting locked down and being in anxiety. And it's pretty good that, uh, praise God, that God is doing a wonderful job through our churches, uh, even though we are locked down in the house, worshiping God. Today, I don't want to take too long, but I just want to get into the message straight. The danger of comparison, the danger of comparison. Uh, if there is anyone in your house, you know, usually when I preach, I tell some people in the church to do something. But in your house, if there is anyone who is not sitting with you and listening to this, I request you to please call that person and make them to sit down with you. You can even close the camera if you wanted, but make sure that you have to get this message because this is a message that we young and old and every age people must hear because it is the word of God that moved many people. And I praise God because while I was going through uh, the statistics, what was happening in lockdown, many young people and many adults are going through depression and anxiety simply because they compare their lives with another person and they cause themselves to see that they are not growing or they are not progressing anything in the family or individual life. And they sit there and worry about their life. So it is something that I dedicated to everyone who's listening to this word, uh, prob uh, the problem that the people are going through. Let's turn our Bible to Genesis chapter 4. Genesis chapter 4, I will read from verse 3 onwards. And in the process of time, Genesis chapter 4, verse 3 onwards, and in the process of the time, it came to pass that Cain brought an offering of the fruit of the ground to the Lord. Abel also brought of the firstborn of his folk and of their fat. And the Lord respected Abel and his offering, but he did not respect Cain and his offering. And Cain was very angry and his countenance fell. So the Lord said to Cain, why are you angry and why has your countenance fallen? If you do well, will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, sin lies at the door and his desire is for you, but you should rule over it. Now Cain talked with Abel, his brother, and it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel and his brother and killed him. Now this is a very interesting text in Genesis chapter 4, the first, uh, what do you call, a murder, a bloodshed is taking place in the Bible. But while I was reading it and reading and I was praying, God, give me a message that out of it that we can talk about it to our members, that we can discuss about what is the Bible is actually talking about. I came to a place this, uh, not only just by own imagination, but listening to other lecturers and listening to other pastors and going through some commentators. It is not just an ordinary uh, anger killing, but it is a result of him compare, comparing his offering with Abel's offering. Now I'll come to that. But before that, I will have to pray before we get into the word. Let's all pray. Dear God in heaven, this is your time, Lord. This is your Sabbath time. This is a time that you set aside out of the uh, seven days and you let this seven day, seventh day to be your day where you rested and you hallowed it and you sanctified it and in it that you brought us through too. 
so that we can not only have one or two, three uh, hours of spiritual revival, but a 24 hours spiritual revival. I pray that you speak to us, God, like never before and comfort our heart. Help us to know that you have a great purpose in our life, which no man can give it and no man can take it. Bless this time in Jesus' name I pray, amen. Psychologists say it's one of the greatest way, one of the greatest way, I mean, fastest way to destroy your inner self or destroy your peace of mind or destroy yourself mentally, it is to compare. Have you ever been in a position that you might be not compared your uh, financially, but you're sure that we actually compare ourselves with another person's spiritual journey? We see someone is praying a lot and you don't know how to pray and you compare yourself saying, I cannot pray like other person pray. So guess what? God is not going to listen to my prayer and I feel weak and I'm not worthy to pray and I better stop praying. Or someone looks at the way another young person have overcome their problem and they compare themselves with their spiritual journey and said, listen, God has blessed that person. God has helped that person, but he's not doing it to me or he's not taking interest about my life. And what we don't realize is God have his own way of dealing our individual problem. And what we do is we take other people's life journey and we compare with ourselves with them and say, guess what? No one is doing it. Or how about we compare our family with another person's family and we said that children is doing well, your ch my, our children is not doing well. What is going on? The husband is treating the wife well, uh, the wife treating the husband well, but in my house, everything is upside down. There is no progress. There is no love. There is no respect, but not knowing some of them that you compare your family with another person maybe acting outwardly, but inwardly they're going through bigger battle than what you're thinking. Comparison, that we do it. But even in spiritual life, we compare ourselves and hear what the greater deception takes place. Three things. I want to share it with you. Three things. Number one, when we compare, our comparison will take you further than you want to go. You think, okay, I'm going to compare myself with that person. And you know what? Comparison is nothing but quenching your desire of satisfaction, knowing that you worked. You know, that you desire yourself. That's the dictionary word they say. It is a process or you compare yourself with another person thinking, are you better than them? Are you worse than them? And what do you do is, and you react to it. And we started to compare this. And slowly and slowly, hear what I want to tell the church, that comparison has no end. The moment you start comparing, you will never come to an end saying, that's enough. First day you wake up and you go to your social media, say WhatsApp group, uh, or as Instagram, or as you go Facebook, or as you go through Twitter, or you go through any social media and you look at somebody and you compare with that person and you're like, I'm not beautiful, or I'm not progressing. My business is not right. My job is not good. I'm not paying enough. Wait a minute, it's not good. And you move it from your bedtime and you go to your own family and one of your own family member will be progressing in the spiritual life of praying or reading or growing in it. And you're like, no, I cannot do this. And you go to office and you go different places and you come to the same bed knowing that you shattered and you feel that you work not living. Comparison has no end. The very first point I want to tell you is comparison will take you further than you want to go. What does it mean? It will steal the peace that God has given you. God has given each one a peace of mind that we can rest upon him, that we can lay our value and our burden to him. And he say, God, I cannot take this. I cannot go this. But the moment when we compare ourselves with another person, and guess what? We will go further than we want to go and we lose a peace of mind. I've seen young people actually going through something and I have done with my own self. My dad said, all this time you were smiling. How come that when you looked into the phone like this and you go through something and your peace of mind is gone? You, you go through that Snapchat and you look at your young people and you look at it and you're like, wait a minute. Why she have done that? 
why he done that, why he got new trainers, or why he got a good life, and he compares off, and you lose your peace that God has given to you. Listen to me, families and friends, that this is the time that devil is do his best to make you feel that God is not actually working in your life. Adam, uh, sorry, uh, Cain and Abel were called together to do the offering. I know you know what, like you know it, I know it. When a manager calls us individually, we are right to take criticism. We okay to face whatever the manager, the boss is going to say. Or when pastor calls it individually, I want to talk to you, we okay. But if it's a, as a group of people, where three or four gather together and you're having a meeting and they say, you did well, but you didn't do your job. And guess what? We compare and we feel bad that we are not progressing. But I want to take three, four points from uh, the three points from the chapter four from verse six to eight. Number one, the comparison will seal the peace of your mind. Number two, comparison will keep you longer than you want to go. In other words, it will blindfold you by not seeing God's, your, your own blessing that God has given to you. We look at somebody and he said, wow. They got the blessing, but you don't realize it. God has blessed you with something that they don't have it. What's happening here is Abel being, Abel's offering is being respected by God, which is praise God that he's been respect, uh, respected, that his offering was respected. But whereas in Cain, he didn't. Yet God spoke to Cain. There are many times that we are trying to compare ourselves with another person, but God is speaking to us saying, listen, I have another purpose for you. I have some other gift for you. I have some other blessing for you that you're thinking you will be satisfied with other people's blessing. But when you compare it, you lose your own blessing. And the devil is very good at blindfolding us. He will blindfold us, our, our blessings. And he said, guess what? Since God is not dealing with you as he's dealing with another person, how about you just give up God? The devil doesn't care if you go to church. He doesn't care if you read the Bible. He does, it, he does care when you pray, but when you don't make the prayer as your life. And when he started doing it, he simply put seed in your heart saying, wait a minute, the problem that you're going through is too huge. Where is your God now? Look, the other person, she prayed and God heard the prayer and did a great miracle. What about your life? Where is your God now? But God works in a mysterious ways that his wonders and miracles are being performed, not in our human mind thought, but he got a greater purpose. He says, my ways, you are higher than your ways. My, you're the way you thinking things is not the way I think. What we are looking for is temporary satisfaction and solution. But God said, I have an everlasting promises and I have everlasting solutions for you. But you're just worried about this one bit and this too shall come to pass. And when there is another task and you're going to just worn out and you just worry. I've seen by God's grace, we do some. Um, while we were in quarantine, we happened to have a team and we started doing uh, every Saturday evening, five o'clock, we have this service and every three days we have Bible studies with young people, one-on-one. -on -one. And we will talk to them and we will ask them how they are doing and how they're keeping. And many young people who didn't become an atheist are agnostic, are skeptic, but they're tired of not seeing the real knowledge of God. And they said, man, I compared myself with another girl saying, I cannot sing like her. And when I see her singing more and more and more, I didn't find the gift that I have in us, gift, gift in me. So I left the church. And it's so another person that I'm in our own Adventist uh, brother who comes from Reading, he told me, bro, like I find out there is no purpose for me in Christian journey simply because other person are having a great time, but not me. You know, self-discovery is the first step towards spiritual recovery. If you don't take time to pray for ourselves, if you don't take time to think about ourselves, who we are in God's own hand, we are going to lose the battle. 
It takes the prodigal son to spend his time off himself. Then he said, guess what? In my father's house, there are many blessings that I am wasting over here. I'm looking for some temporary solution, but guess what? I'm going to my father's house. Many of us, if we simply stop comparing ourselves with another person, God will open our eyes and say, here we go. This is the gift that I have given to you. This is the blessing I have laid for you. You may go into something and you find if you wish that you have other person's blessing, you'll be all right, but don't worry. I have time for you, but just stick on it. Christianity is not about trusting and obeying and you find the result instantly. Some people get a result after 10 years. I've, uh, me and my family, we've been used to praying for our family. They didn't have a baby for one, not only just one year, two years, three years. After 10 years, after seven years, they have babies. And if you start comparing it, we give place to the devil and he simply blindfold our eyes and let not see the blessing that God has given for us. Number three, comparing yourself will cost you more than you want to pay. Consequence, it will cause you to lose your purpose of life. You know, have you ever been in a position that you compare ourselves, or that we compare ourselves with another person and we lose the purpose that God created us for? God created us to be someone but we expect our life to be something different by comparing someone. There's a, you know, like, it, they took it as a joke, but this is a fun fact that a lot of uh, young people that India, that my friends who used, uh, who are engineers now, they said simply because I don't know why I study engineering. I just looked at my friend applying for it and I've applied for it. And guess what? I'm an engineer. I go and play football. Why? Because my friends are playing. So I'm going to play. And here, we are, here I am comparing myself and trying to live it. Why don't we just take an individual journey that we hold our hands with God and say, God, what is the purpose that you have for me? What is that that you have for me that I want to look at it? Abel was called to, and Cain was called to repent from his desire, from his anger, from his sin. God said to him, listen, if you don't take your chance right now, the sin is at the door waiting to decide to take your life. But guess what? You can simply repent now. Which in other words, God called Cain to be a worshiper. But because he gave so much time comparing himself, he became a killer. There is so many of us, God called us for a special purpose in times like this. I would say in times like this, so many of us were busy with working. I will take a time, I'll say this, so many of us were busy with our games, busy with self-centered in social media, busy with everything. And when church comes and say, we have a prayer meeting on Wednesday, why don't you come in? You say, I'm busy with night shift. You say, why don't you come for a Friday prayer meeting? We say, I'm so sorry, I have a family time. You know, Sabbath is a family time, I ain't got time for it. And we call, God called, said, why don't you do some evangelism now? At least now. He said, God, I ain't got no time for it. You know, I have bills to pay. God said, why don't you just come for the youth meeting? No, God, you know, I have a football. I have this fashion show. I have this series to finish. I have the homework to do. And guess what God said? I'm going to shut everything down that you will find only place that you would meet. Not just one week, not just three weeks, but three solid months. And it will keep going on until we change our mind from saying, no, it is not about me. It is not about them. It is about him. We spent so much time on ourselves and God was so tired on missing us. And he said, guess what? I'm going to lock down everything so that you will learn a lesson. You have nothing but me who can give you a life. Cain was called to be a worshiper but he ended up being a killer. Listen, church, that I can say testimony after testimony, but nothing, nothing will change my mind and nothing will ever come closer. I, I pray it will come closer, but there is one testimony that was so closer to me and I did share it with you and I will share it with you again. Going to Malaysia, doing evangelism with many young people, baptizing after 15 young people, they asked me to come to a house to pray. And going inside that bed and I'm seeing a, a sister laid on the bed with AIDS and cancer. Simply because she trusted a guy who would take care of her. 
And when she was young, everyone had a relationship, but she didn't have it. And the friends were mocking at it. She, they were look, said, look at you. You still being, you know, young and you're beautiful and you don't have a boyfriend. You are not in a relationship. Why don't you just get someone and stop living? You're missing life, man. You're missing something. Why don't you just get somebody and she's doing it? And she was comparing herself with another person interested about doing it and she compared herself with christians and she couldn't find any joy in there so now she's comparing herself with a worldly person and here comes a guy who came lived with her and he messed up messed up that relationship when she found out that she got eight he left her he said see ya bye bye i don't need you anymore being that alone in two weeks time she's finding out that she got cancer too such a lady like that stretched on the bed, waiting for time to close her eyes. She said, you know what? It's time for me to pray. And she said a prayer and she started reading the Bible and she said, I want to go to church. So they put her on a wheelchair, brought her to the camp meetings, listening to the sermon. And here she is. And she said, I want to be baptized. Got baptized, not only being baptized, she was using her testimony to the young people brought 10 more young people and some of them were local gangsters in Malaysian uh, uh, Ipo, a place called Ipo from there. They brought her into the church and here they said, Pastor, I just got one more month, but here are a few, few young people. Take them, do with something and she laid to rest. A closest testimony in my heart. She said, I compared and not realizing the consequence will steal my peace of mind, blindfold my present blessing, and third, it will make me to lose the purpose that I'm born for. Many of us in our church, we compare ourselves too much, not realizing we worn out and we broken up. But it's time to make change. But how do we do it? How do we do it? Galatians chapter 6, as the sister read for the scripture reading. Let's turn our Bible to Galatians chapter 6. In Galatians chapter 6, verse 4 to 5. I will read it from New Living Translation, which makes more simple. It says, each of you must examine your own actions then you can be proud of your own accomplishments without comparing yourself to others, assume your own responsibilities. Paul says, guess what? You need to stop focusing on other people. You need to stop comparing your spiritual life with another person's spiritual life. You need to stop comparing your gift with another person's gift. God called you for some special purpose. And the Bible says, he that started a good work in you shall accomplish until the day of Christ. He didn't say he that started a good work in a pastor, in a person alone, and he will help you so that you will finish the work. He didn't say, I started it. I know how to finish it. You mess up the plan. It doesn't mess up my purpose in your life. I will take it and I'll mold it and I'll shape it and I'll use you until the time comes and you just stop comparing yourself. So the very first thing Paul said, Focus on your own responsibility. Focus on your own life that God given you. Why do we have to take a time to go and compare other person's life when the other person's life is completely dramatic than, others, that, than yours? They might be smiling outside saying, I'm good. God is good all the time. Everything is all right. My business is going well. But deep inside, you don't know how many times they're crying night times. And you compare about their outward look. And he said, I want to be like that. Young people said, I want to be that like the celebrity. But they go and they compare themselves and they want to buy clothes just like they wear. Put, uh, put those things on their face just like them. Put those shoes on their feet just like them. And guess what? When the character changes, another character comes, another behavior begins. We looking for a temp like temporary satisfaction. God said, I have something else. So just focus on what I have started in your life. When was the last time we took time to pray for ourselves? Lord, what do you actually call me to do? I think I might be singing, but not knowing that I'm a good writer. God, you called me to, to actually preach, but not knowing that I can also sing a 
Lord, I don't know that you call me to be a musician, but not knowing that I can pray and heal people in Jesus' name. God have a great spiritual, uh, spiritual gifts that what we confuse is we confuse our passion with the purpose. And God said, no, 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 separate it. Focus on what I called you for. And here I am starting a good work in you. Paul said, focus on yourself, not on others. Your competition should be within yourself, not with others. You have to be a better version than who you were yesterday. Number two, Galatians chapter six, four to five, when we read it, it says, cherish and be grateful for your own growth, which God provided. And number three, celebrate and be respectful for others who achieved and not being pride and jealousy about what others are doing. There are so many people in the church that we don't know their story, what they did before. We say happy Sabbath, we give a high five to them and we say goodbye, see you next week. But if we just simply take time to sit down and listen to their stories, I have heard uh, by individual conversation, Shisha is a guy that helped me. I said, man, you got to go and talk to everybody. I said, all right, let's talk. And when we go and talk to individually a person and when their stories are come out, they've been through so, so much and they just started into the church and when they do something great thing, and sadly, not in a church, but sadly, not the churches where people started to feel jealous about them, feel pride about them, feel talk bad about them. But guess what? When I see some of their attitude uh, towards the response, the reaction towards the criticism, they just simply pray, smile, keep doing what they're doing. We got to celebrate and mentor our young people. We got to celebrate and appreciate our adults. I was listening to some songs and it says that it doesn't take an individual to change the whole community. It takes a young people's energy and elders' wisdom to change the community. It takes, when was the last time we sat down and say, elder, tell me a story, man. We love you too. We as a young people, we give you respect. We tell you, tell us what you are. Tell us what you've been through. And when we started to appreciate Others people listen. Guess what, church? That church is not like a multifunctional some group of people. No, we come together as sinners, seeking the Savior, who's our physician, to fix our heart that's being damaged by the disease of pride, of sin, and selfishness. And God said, "I will take care of you. You are different, uh, different parts of the bodies, but you're in one body." You're different organs, but you're in one body where you can be played well in the community. By God's grace, I thank God that we Adventism are good at health messages. We are good at knowing what is law and prophecies. We know a lot of great things, but we forgot along the way how to love one another. We come along the way that we forgot the basic thing is to forgive one another. We have come a long way that we compare ourselves. We started to lose our own peace of mind, lose the purpose that why God created us for. So I pray that when we are in quarantine, that we will overcome this too, while we are overcoming the lockdown. That while we are here, we will start asking God, God, what do you really want me to do in the church that you brought me to? What do you want me to do the greatest message of Adventism that you've given me in the time that, we, and that I'm living in? Am I just going to compare myself with another person and going along or am I going to create something? That Lord, I, it is wonderful to see that we living in a generation that I can use iPhone X, but I'm sorry, Lord, my lifestyle with you is still Nokia double one double zero. That it's so wonderful to see that the world is going fast, but my spiritual life is still low. That we are fascinated and we are interested to talk about a lot of people. But when it comes to Jesus Christ, we reluctant and we said, you know what? Uh, he's a great God that we worship. Uh, but anyway, you come to church on Saturday and we will tell you more. But why don't we say that time right there, right itself? And said, you know, man, sit down. Let me tell you the wonderful character of love of Jesus. God has great value for you. He respects you and he's not ashamed of your fall. 
There's a lot of people. I want to finish it with this. There's a lot of us. When we pray, we say, God, are you too ashamed of my sinful behavior? God said, I'm not ashamed of it. If I was ashamed of it, I won't be a savior. I am a savior who embraces your weakness, embraces who you are. But hear what it is. I love you with all my life, but I'm not liking what you're doing. And I'm going to help you only if you let me in into your life. We are very good at inviting Christ into the church part of our life, not the whole part of our life. We want Christ to come into the Sabbath service, but we don't want Christ to come to our relationship with our partners. We want Christ to come into our in, in, into the uh, service, but we don't want him to come for our business. And if he comes in, if you let him in, he not only make you to be the person that God wants you to be, but he also make you to be a better Christian. So let's do it in this quarantine time. I request and I'm asking you to take a commitment that you love him and that you will see your life through him and not comparing yourself with others where you can be deceived and will not and get damaged of your spiritual life. God bless you all. Amen.